Ever feel like your website's dragging its feet? What if you could pinpoint those slow bits and make things snappy? Like, really snappy. I'm Paul, a web developer, and we're going to dive into the reimagined Chrome DevTools performance panel. Before I take you from 0 to 60, here's a peek at some of our latest features. So you're probably familiar with the performance panel and dev tools, but we've been cooking up some seriously cool stuff. Today, we'll walk through a typical scenario. A user says the site feels slow. We'll go through how to nail down the issue using the latest and greatest features. So I heard interactions on android.com can be a tad slow. First things first, let's see it with our own eyes and get a feel for what's happening. Okay, not too bad, the LCP looks good. Let's try a few interactions. No. Yeah, so each one is logged down here in real time so you can hunt down the slowest ones. And to be honest, it looks pretty fast on my machine. Let's see what real users have to say about this. In two clicks, we can bring in data from the Chrome UX report. Okay, yeah, all right, bit slower. Uh, for LCP, we break it down into subparts for your local load and the 75th percentile from the field. And these are still all right, but we should keep an eye on that TTFB. Our field INP, uh, yeah, it's a bit worse. I want to investigate that. To do it right, we need to see how it feels on a typical phone. And throttling is going to help us do that. For network, our round trip time from the field matches up with fast 4G. For CPU, we'll calibrate our machine. Now, this is going to run a mini benchmark just to determine how much slowdown we should apply. Okay, and yeah, mid-tier mobile sounds great. So now getting a handle on real-world performance is super straightforward. No more jumping between tools. It's all right here, making it way easier to understand what your users are actually experiencing and then replicating that. All right, let's trace. So we'll capture a reload with full instrumentation and find out where to focus our energy. Right now it's gathering instrumentation from across the browser and the renderer, network activity in the main thread, and doing some analysis. Well, okay. Up here in the left, if I open up the sidebar, these insights are upgraded versions of what you've seen in Lighthouse, and they help illuminate some of the biggest performance wins and the great jump off points for your investigation. Looks like we got some render blocking requests here. Yeah. Um, our largest contentful paint by phase, it's uh, mostly element render delay. That is typical when the uh, LCP is text. Okay, no big deal. INP by phase. Ooh, yeah, okay. <laughs> big boy, lots of processing duration. Interesting, okay. Let's zoom back out. <sighs> yeah, we can't forget about our friends, friends, <laughs> the third party scripts. Now, sometimes they can be the culprit. This view gives a quick rundown, and hovering gives you an idea of how it exactly matches up to the flame chart. Okay, so this all might look a bit busy to you. Okay, don't panic. First, we got these third parties. Uh, we probably have limited influence over them, so we can just dim them. Now, there's a bunch going on, and I want to zoom and pan and explore, and if you've used this before, I bet the zooming and the scrolling through you. Now, you can pick your style. 
I prefer this guy where scroll is scroll and WASD zooms and pans. All right. Yeah. So we got these scripts here. They're dimmed and they all belong to Google, Google Tag Manager. I don't need to see them. We can add them to the ignore list. And that way, the flame chart is going to collapse all those icicles. Ah, uh, yeah, this is much calmer. Now we can focus on our own code. In your web app, you might see uh, like a lot of framework functions in here. And it's just going to be messy. So we've got you covered. Instead, what you probably want to see is the names of components, whether they're being hydrated, rendered, updated, all of this in the language of your framework. That's straightforward enough to enable. While performance.measure has allowed you to deliberately augment the flame chart with your own data, now your framework can do that work for you. Console timestamp now offers lower overhead, does the same thing. And check out the link for details. Angular v20 has this coming in dev mode, and it's coming soon to Next.js. Just ping your friendly neighborhood framework maintainer if you want this in your stack. Getting to the bottom of performance issues is all about understanding the, the details. With improved visualizations and framework integration, you can quickly get on the same page and figure out what's slowing things down. I feel a bit more oriented now, and I might share this with a colleague, so let's add in a few annotations. This area over here on the left, uh, well, yeah, we got these render blocking requests, and you can see, well, we're blocked in render. So let's just mark that down. Render blocked by network. Another thing, we can see this tracking min script downloading here. And here it is evaluating. And that relationship between network and main thread is really key. So let's make that just explicit. I zoom back out and I scrub across the top to look at these screenshots. I can see that this... Uh, video in the main frame of the page. It starts loading about here, and the blue line on the top matches up with the blue line in the flame chart. So I'm just gonna mark, it's about here. Video starts here-ish. All right, that INP from before, it still has my curiosity. Uh, let's see, 190 milliseconds. Uh, hmm, okay, yeah, big processing duration. Doing what? Let's try this. Oh, okay. Tracking a user event, tag manager and analytics. So these auto annotations are super handy for quickly understanding what's happening in different parts of the trace. Well, my question is, why? Hmm. We can ask the AI to explain anything on the flame chart. Uh, what's the purpose of this work? Okay, yeah, we're tracking uh, user interaction events um, across the web application, Google Analytics 4 and Universal Analytics. Interesting, yeah, hmm. So we've got this long interaction. Um, it takes a while to show the user the visual effect of their click. Most of the time is in processing. And within that, we're tracking the click for analytics. If you ask me, they don't need to know about the click before the user does. So how can we fix it? So these insights, you're gonna actually ask the AI for more specific advice on how to tackle them, personalized to your trace. Yeah, suggest fixes, that's perfect. Okay, this will use metadata from the insight and tool use to collect additional data from the trace. All right, so the processing duration is the most significant contributor. Uh, we recommend bringing up long tasks, uh, perhaps using set timeout, and this will allow the browser to yield to the main thread. Okay, you know what? This actually gels exactly with what I was thinking would work. Um, well, let's try out that fix right now. We'll click into the track event function, and we'll just add this in, and this will allow us to yield to the main thread. All right. Okay, let's take a look and see what kind of effect this has. And do, do. All right, new trace. The INP that we just had was 190 milliseconds. So, moment of truth. Oh, yeah, 
the new INP is 99 milliseconds, uh, definitely faster. And the processing duration is a lot quicker because we deferred that non-critical work. Huh. And boom, goes the dynamite. It's not just about finding the problem, it's about fixing it effectively. So there you have it. From understanding real world data to getting actionable insights and verifying your improvements. It's all designed to make your job easier and your websites faster. I'd really love to hear what you think about these features. Let me know in the comments or on the bug tracker. Cheers.